Welcome back to AOF. Today we're going to be talking about Meat Mill, his impact on music, and everything that he's done to impact the city of Philadelphia. We're taking it way back. Whoa, 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 way back. Alright? So let's get in and support us. Like, subscribe. And like get rid of this because you're dropping so much. Play that shit. Yeah. K with 50 shots and I spray that shit. Spray Pussy, it. if you don't mean it, don't say that don't shit. Say Cut that the shit. shell size of an L to make a Maybach flip. Woo. Man, I hate that shit. Niggas be talking out their face, but soon as you body something, they, they be, be talking, talking to, to the jits. Man, I'm talking with my eight. Fuck arguing with you. I'm putting all of them in you. They got chalking from the gate. I ain't playing with you, I let this can hit you Run up on you broad day, murky why your man why with you, you man? He was strapped with a strap, but he ran why with you ran? Now nigga, I call a coroner's in vans for you Just to get you up, body bag, zip you up Cause you's a done for, nigga, what you come for? What you come for? This a grown man game, you's a young boy The Mac 10, hold 50 plus some more Hey, it's your boy on Justified from Artists of Tomorrow with another influential and insightful episode diving into the influential hip-hop artists today who's paved the way for everything we've listened to. Today, we're taking a deep look into Meek Mill and his impact in the Philadelphia music scene and rap game as a whole. Come on, we've all grown up listening to songs and knew exactly who Meek Mill is. Meek Mill, born Robert William, came up in the Philadelphia rap scene in the late 2000s, putting out a series of influential mixtapes that helped to put the city on the map. Some of his earliest projects include 2009 Flamers 1, Flamers 2, and we all know the, all the bangers on that song because they were playing every single word. Followed up by his 2010 Mr. Philadelphia and Beat the System. We all know songs from these because these songs were used in his movies that he came out with in the early 2000s, which a lot of people gave, it, they became hood classics. Nicole, you were almost involved in a homicide. So whoever it was that tried to kill Bam, he got to handle that. He did. What y'all going on there do? Please drop the name, Meek. Your boy, Sparks, he's been talking a gang of shit. It's too bad I'm gonna have to cut his career short. It's the city of brotherly love. These early mixtapes gained him a local buzz and allowed him to hone his style, which blended gritty storyline telling and addictive beats. Fucking rap, dad. Forgot history on this motherfucker, man. Come this motherfucker. Sometimes when I fucking slow this shit, I go out there and start shoveling motherfuckers, paying this like a fucking 12 years old, 10 years old, shit like that. And man, with a couple older niggas, you know what I'm saying? Niggas, I was looking up to, you know what I mean? Come back at like 2, 300, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to 12, 2, 300, I'm feeling good, you know what I mean? Come here, what I mean? Cheese steak. Yeah, I can get whatever the fuck I want. Man, that shit felt good. But it was times when, you know, when I did have him, I came in this motherfucker and I had to get my boogie on, you know what I mean? Close <laughs> Yeah, man. So I asked my little cousin, I asked my girl cousin and shit, we was chilling up and shit in my grandma's house. We was chilling and shit. I'm like, yo, y'all hungry? They're like, yeah. I'm like, alright, come on and shit, we're gonna get something to eat. We thinking that I got some money the whole time. I ain't got no paper or nothing, but we gonna eat though, you know what I'm saying? We gonna eat. <laughs> Me, like two of my girl cousins. I'm like, come on, we out. Slide and shit. We slide. We get up in this joint. Well, what do y'all want? They want chicken fingers, fucking little wings and shit like that. I got cheese, dude. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, we eating and shit. You know what time it is now, right? It's bill time. It's time to pay the bill. So, you know, I tell them, I say, all right, look, y'all. I'm talking to him. I say, Kyle, I'm a young boy. I'm probably like fucking 13, 14, some shit like that. You know, but we got to eat, you know, it's hard time. You feel me? So, I'm like, all right, listen. Right now, I'm going to sit. I'm going to stay still. But y'all got to leave out the store right now. They like, I'm like, y'all got to leave out the store. Like, like, leave out the store. You know like, uh, I said, alright, well, if y'all don't leave, I'm leaving and y'all gonna be stuck here with this tag. Like, I thought you were paying for it. Chill. I just asked y'all, was y'all hungry? <laughs> so they still was sitting down. I got up. Got me up. They get up. I said, now come on now. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna show you what we had to do. <laughs> You know, we slide, I said, now, 
Yeah. We was walking, we was walking, so once we got past the wall right here, we sprint. We shot, we shot. It's, it's me, my, my two girl cutting this shit is funny as shit to me, man. We shoot through heck, man. You know what I'm saying? Then we hit this first joint right here. See, this Walgreen wasn't always here. You know what I'm saying? It was a big ass parking lot. You know what I'm saying? We hit this joint, shot straight through, shot straight to my grandma's house. They like, yo, you crazy. I'm like, y'all, y'all hope y'all good now though, ain't y'all? Yeah, yeah, we good. Yeah, all right then. So I ain't crazy. We gotta, we gotta do what we gotta do, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, that, and that's just, you know, that's just, that's just part of just being a leader, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you and your in 2012, Meek Mill dropped his debut studio album, Dreams and Nightmare, under Rick Ross' Maybach music imprint. If you were around in that time period, Dreams and Nightmares was one of the most influential projects of the decade, also giving us one of the Philadelphia's staple anthem at this point. It, every song, every game you go to from the Philadelphia Eagles to the concerts to the 76ers, it doesn't matter. This song represents Phillies for any generation from the early 2000s from then on. This project took Meat Mill's career to a new heights, debuting at number two on Billboard, 200 earning him a widespread critical acclaim standout track like Dreams and Nightmares and Amen, with Drake showing Meat Mill being creative and themic in a street record. At the time, it marked one of the highest charting debuts for a Philadelphia rapper ever. In the years following, Meat Mill continued putting out music and putting the fucking Philadelphia on the map with projects like 2013 Dream Chasers 3 mixtape, which boys started guest features from Wale, Fabulous, and more when they were at their peak. The free project moved over 67,000 units, showing Meat Mill's immense drawing power. His relationship and collaboration with Drake also helped him elevate his profile through two would go throughout some public up and downs. If you were there, it's, it's the Twitter fingers and the light skinness and exposing someone that they wrote for him. It was actually a very crazy time in music, and you should go back and definitely do your research. Remember when Drake and Meek Mill were beefing, Drake did a huge show in Philly. I was with and him. Even, oh, you were with him. I was with him. <laughs> and he even talked shit about Meek on stage. Yeah. And he walked out just fine. Yeah. I mean, them, people were all in the distance. Like, oh, yeah, this motherfucker. I, I, I give it to D, you know, Drake, my boy, and I fuck with Meek. Meek. Them DC niggas pulled up. They couldn't do shit, though. This is right. Drake we talking about. Yeah. Like, hey, watch out. Y'all came to, to say something. You know what I'm saying? But From a distance. Who was going to crash out and go to jail for the sake of what? While Meek Mill faced legal troubles and prison time in the late 2010s, he used his challenging period to advocate for criminal justice reform. The nationwide free meat movement brought greatness awareness through the probation and parole on the musical. Supposed drug rehabilitation. He was down there, according to the court, without their knowledge. All of these have been ruled at this time to be probation violations. Right now, there is a sentencing hearing underway inside the Criminal Justice Center. What remains to be seen, will this judge order Meek Mill to be taken into custody? This is a very long and sordid history with the courts. He's been locked up by this judge before on probation violations, but she even said it herself. She gave him quite a bit of latitude leading up to this latest situation, but it was, uh, it was almost too much, an avalanche of allegations of violations and right now we're going to step back side 2018 album championship debuted number one high point came from the overcoming diversity and people are just saying it was good especially in a time period where the philadelphia eagles won the championship we won the championship when he dropped the album championship it's crazy to see how his growth has shown over the years from him showing so much love to influential rappers who are born in the philadelphia area controversial late 2020 21 meek mill got into an online debate saying that he was trying to show love to a lot of the younger artists meek be stealing all the songs from the young niggas and he's been doing it his whole career he stole fucking uh regular from lord Dell. stole he stole fat g that lives. He stole that song from Lil Nah. That nigga ass fuck. But it was hard for him because a lot of the younger artists were beefing. But he still, time to time, would show and tag artists showing complete love and regard for their music because he thought it was good. Even though 
Meek Mill had proudly repped Philly and given the city exposure for few other artists have. He remains one of the biggest rap artists to emerge from the region and a true pioneer of modern hip-hop sound. That are your thoughts on Meek Mill's impact and influence. He has another project dropping soon, hopefully, because he's been debating and dropping. Do people think he's fell off recently? A lot of people think that he's still on. Even DJ Academics talks about it. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe for more, and we'll have so much more artists on the way.